Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital, and today I'm doing a review of Traction 5. Now, Traction has a unique history. It started out in around 2002 and was written by a single individual, Julian Storer. In around 2008, no further development was made on it. And then um, during NAM in 2013, it was announced that uh, the original programmer had started a company and was committed to continuing the legacy of Traction. Traction 4 was pretty much about updating the audio engine and getting the DAW compatible with uh, 2013. But now Traction 5 is out with new features. So let's take a look and see if it keeps up to the competition and if it truly offers something unique. So the first thing that's pretty great about Traction is the price. It comes with certain Behringer products and Mackie products. And also you can pay 60 bucks to get it outright by itself or 30 bucks to upgrade from a previous version. So that all by itself puts it in a unique class. There's not a lot of um, full featured professional DAWs that are 60 bucks. So as we open up Traction, we see that it has a, a tabbed browsing sort of set up. And um, the first tab you'll come to is uh, a tab where you can look at all your projects. And this tab makes it very easy for you to organize your different projects. Each project can have multiple edits that you can access. And so all your edits are listed here. And all of your recorded um, WAV files will be listed under recorded audio. So having all this information on this one page makes it very easy to, to keep track of your files and organize them and so forth. So I really like what they've done here. I think this is probably some of the best file management that I've seen in any DAW. Another thing I really like about Traction is the way it handles loops. I told Traction where my loops are located and it automatically generated a database with keywords that I can select to find the set of loops that I want. So if I click on techno and drums, it'll give me a list of techno drums. Now, as you can see here, some of the don't actually comply. These aren't drums. But here, that is techno drum so it there's no actual tags on these files what Traxon is doing is looking at the names of the files and looking at what folder they're in and generating these tags so while it's not perfect it is miles better than what I've seen in other DAWs which don't do any any sort of tagging of your files of your loop files but if you have a lot of different loops and they're in different folders and they're organized according to who produced them. It's very difficult to find the, the loop that you want. So this is a very welcome feature. Another really sweet feature is the fact that I can take entire edits and bring them into another edit. So here I have this recording and if I want to just have this whole thing in a different project, and or a different edit, I can simply just drag it and drop it into this project and it'll render the clip and allow me to play that whole entire project, no matter how complicated it is, easily and without using any more CPU than it takes to, to play back a stereo file. That's a fairly revolutionary feature. It's pretty amazing. And I can see how it could be quite useful, especially if you're doing very large projects. So that's another win for uh, traction. Now I'm going to get into some things that I don't like. And the first thing that I find fairly annoying is the way that inputs are handled. Now, I do kind of like the idea of dragging and dropping this input into to different tracks. But I like to be able to play on, on one track using one instrument and just hit a key and switch to a different track. Um, and that's how I, I do it in, in Sonar. That's the, the DAW I mostly use. 
But here I have to grab the mouse and I have to drag it and drop it into a different track. And that takes a lot more time than just hitting a, an up and down arrow on my keyboard. It's a little bit tedious. I have to make sure I, I aim at the right place and make sure I get it right on there. So it's a small deal, but it's, it, it makes a big difference to, to my workflow to have to move this guy around. Now, another thing that is kind of lacking, I believe, is the mixer section. Now, I understand that the philosophy of traction is that you have this very linear, very easy to manipulate setup where I can make things pre-fader, post-fader, and instead of giving me a list of complicated buttons and things I have to do to, to do this, I can just drag and drop. It's simple. It is simple, but the, the problem is, is when I'm getting down to mixing, I've recorded my stuff and now I just want to mix and make everything sound good. This is my mixer. This is what I'm dealing with. This is a mess. Um, I have to look and hunt for my faders because they're in different places. And, and that's going to slow me down. And while this is good, this flexibility is good for certain tasks. For just trying to get a good sound, this is not better. This is not better than what the competition does with a more traditional mixing view. This is confusing. This gives me a headache. The, the innovation isn't really paying off when I'm mixing. Um, it does pay off when I want a certain sound and I want the flexibility to make things uh, post-fader, pre-fader, and do some different tasks like that. But it's not helping me out just bread and butter mixing. And then on the other side of that, there's, there's no busing in traction uh, and i have to kind of preface that you can kind of bust things but it it's a little bit convoluted basically if i want to bust something i have to use a rack and i can use a pass-through rack so i have a bus set up here and what i had to do is basically drag and drop a, um, a filter and then i have to go into racks and into the pass-through rack and racks are actually kind of different than other filters because they're just like this one entity basically anyway it's convoluted it's not a, a seamless kind of nice workflow if i want to assign a bus in another daw i just basically you know choose what tracks i want and then right click and choose their bus and it's done this is not really paying off. I, I feel like what should be done is give us a more traditional mixer view, but still give us this too. We can see the internal workings of what we're doing, but at the same time, we can have all of our main faders in a row and all of our sins in a row. And then if they add uh, the ability to bus, then we can just have a, a busing section. That's going to really help workflow tremendously in my opinion okay so another thing that i have a problem with in traction is the selection of built-in filters they call them or plugins so th these plugins here are pretty anemic they're they're not very robust um, the eq is kind of decent and i like that you can just control it pretty easily just with the mouse but there's no switchable mode as far as like this is a shelving um, EQ here but I can't switch this into a peaking EQ um, even though I can change the Q here but I can't make it not shelve um, and these I can't switch modes um, but you know I kind of expect a, a few more features in, in my EQs, this is what I'm used to. And, and this one's not too bad, um, but let's look at like the, um, the reverb that comes with traction. Basically you get room size dampening, wet dry mix, um, width. It's pretty bare bones. There's no frills, no extras. It's, it's not highly versatile. You, you basically get a reverb. 
So I think if you're just starting out and you're looking for a robust uh, set of plugins where you know you're not going to have to get anything extra, this definitely it's not going to fit the bill. There's no gate here, for instance. There's no uh, distortion or saturation kind of plugins here. Um, and there's basically, unless you want to count this very weak sampler, there's basically no plug-in instruments. With that said, you are getting this for a fairly cheap price, but um, there are some items that are, you know, around the $100 range that give you instruments that you can use and that have a lot better processing effects. Also, something like Reaper, there, the um, effects that come with Reaper are actually quite good, um, much more flexible and powerful than these. I, I think in the past they were, were offering plugin suites that Mackie created, and now that they're their own company, they don't have those plugins anymore. So they're probably trying to do some catch up and, and get those things out there. But as for now, it's, it's a little embarrassing how weak these plugins are. So what's the final verdict here? I like this DAW. Something about it, I like what it's trying to do. I like the statement that it's making. But I don't think I would use this for my, my uh, music making projects. I think the mixer here is really holding me back from, from wanting to switch to this. And, and then also, as I mentioned before, the having to drag these things around kind of slows me up. All that said, there is something, as I thought about this DAW, there's something that came to me. I wouldn't recommend this for making songs, but if you are making something that's kind of a, in a program format, if you're doing video, if you're doing podcast, anything like that, where you're mixing kind of different types of sound, you have some music, you have some spoken voice, and you have like sound effects or Foley work or, or things like that. This DAW makes a lot of sense in that context. And a lot of my criticisms just don't apply when you're doing work like that. And the fact that, you know, I can drag an entire project into another project, that is perfect if you're doing a video and you want to come in and design some sounds for that video and, and manage the audio of an entire a video that lasts maybe 30 minutes or whatever, to be able to break that up into different projects and then drag and drop it into a master edit, that's huge. And when you're doing that kind of work, it's not as important to have a traditional kind of, you know, a console mixing environment. It makes a lot more sense that you're more focused on which plugin and in which order am I going to do it, especially if you're doing sound effects. And if you're doing like podcast and you just want to, you know, trigger some sound effects and then you have your vocal, you're not really worried as much about mixing in that context either. That's what I would recommend this for. If you're doing music pretty exclusively and you're doing, you know, five minute songs, three minute songs, I think this is, doesn't currently at least have the workflow you're looking for. But if you're doing video, sound for video, this has a lot of features that are going to pretty much beat anything else out there. So that's my evaluation of Traction. I hope you enjoy this video. Go ahead and tell me what you think about my take on it. Subscribe to the channel if you like, and um, thanks a lot for listening.